All right, welcome again, Military Gunner TV. So tonight we're going to speak about Andre Blake, Wes Harding, and the man himself, Javon Heath. Um, it's been a while since I've spoken about um, Javon Heath. Um, it's been a while. A lot of people haven't heard about him as well. So I want to have a look at him and how well he's doing right now. Because we do know the quality that he possess, but we haven't seen him in the longest while. So people, thank you very much for tuning in. As you guys know, the moment you're here, just hit the like button and uh, say hello. <laughs> just hit the like button and say hello. So we're going to speak about Andrew Blake because he, he, he played too much recently and no one has spoken about it. I'm not sure why, but definitely he has been on good form. Looks good as well. Um, I can't say it really, looks really, really good. So we'll be speaking about um, these guys. And uh, hopefully it's not a long one <laughs> because I've been doing this stream every, each time I come live. I tend to go live for a long period of time and I, i'm not expecting it but so guys please as you guys are here just smash the like button i'd really do appreciate that and tell me if, if you guys are seeing any problem any glitches any anything like that <clears throat> so we're going to go into these players and we have to see what these players are really really doing um let me see what's happening here definitely what's happening here let me see so i'm back sorry sorry about that really really sorry about that I want to check first if I was on the right Wi-Fi. Big up Andy McNally. Thank you for jumping in, bro. A lot of respect. Um, much respect for you. Um, thank you guys for jumping in. As you guys know, just jump in, smash the like button, and let's get straight into what we want to deal with. What we want to talk about, all the things that we want to discuss, guys. So as we reach in, just smash that like button. I would really do appreciate it. So we have a, a few things to talk about. <laughs> um, DJ Romain. Big up DJ Romain. Uh, Blake better than Man City number two, who was in the MLS. So why him going to City and Blake still at MLS? Yes, Blake is better than him. That is the, that is, that is what I'm talking about. The other day I was speaking on the show and I said that a lot of players are really really underrated, and uh, some of the time I'm not sure the reason why um some of these players don't uh, make that move, but there are things other things that I think really covers. A lot of these stories you will definitely have to speak to the player themselves to get a better understanding of what really went on i think that is the best way to know what is happening with them but i know for a fact that blake is better than that keeper he's not the best keeper and look he's in the premier league he has played premier league much before and he's not the best keeper so there are always some hidden stories in these in these things uh, there's always hidden stories so let's get into um let's see we're going to move over to Jeva um to andre blake first person that we're going to have a look at um i do think that is someone that i wanted to look at so i do appreciate him um very very good goalkeeper um and if any of you guys didn't watch the game he played two games he played a game um yesterday evening to be fair to be honest um it's concacaf um i think it's concacaf league um league the concacaf league he played two games in the concacaf league concacaf champions league and and then again man city owns the mlf exactly they know who they want people they know they know exactly who they want and what they want what that person for so there are other stories the other sides to the stories it's not always as what we are seeing but there are definitely other sides to the stories but we want to see what's going to happen um let me see so what we're going to do, people, we, we, I, we want to break down um, both performances. You, you guys know that I love to do the statistic aspect of games, um, passing percentage, um, save ratio. These are the things that I love to look at. So you guys know, if you're coming to my channel, you'll be seeing those things. And you can make your assessment if it is good or not. That is how I, I do my thing, people. So if you don't love stats, <laughs> you might not like my channel. But if you love stats, if you love stats and if you love the analytical aspect, if you love the analytical aspect of football, you will love my channel. If you love 
um, the, 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 the acute um, aspect of football, you definitely will love my content because I don't just talk about players. I get into stats, facts. I use these things to do comparison, get a better idea of what the players doing, um, how the players actually performing. So, in any, um, if you want to go into a debate, you can say you have stats to back your argument. You can't go into a debate. Um, you're going to speak about something, and you're only going to speak about something emotionally because you don't have stats, you don't have any facts, you have no facts to back your argument. So I love facts, I love stats because these things um can back my argument. If I'm trying to defend a player, if a player is good or not, I can go for my stats and say these during this time period. This is how the player have been playing. This is how well the player have been doing. That is what I do. So big up um, everyone who's coming in. Big up Anthony Sports. Big up, bro. I salute you. Wabuan. Medea. Medea. It's funny. It's so often that enough people think me in Jamaica. Whole of people think me in Jamaica. But I admit it, people. I admit it. Um, Coach Parchment there, big up coach, <laughs> big up Raman, big up, big up, thank you for jumping in, big up Tennis, a lot of respect, thank you for jumping in as well, um, people, I'm going to go back to what I was saying, I'm, I'm running through three players, um, Andre Blake, Javon East, and West Harden, um, they put on performances, West Harden had a, a horror show, a literal horror show, but we're going to do a breakdown of what happened and why these things happen. as you guys know, I love the stats. That's how I operate. <laughs> That's my part of the uh, of my YouTube, the YouTube um, fraternity, the YouTube world, the statistical element of football. That is what I love, and this is how I do. <laughs> Linstead Market, no, me not the Linstead Market. I'm Fort Worth, actually. Fort Worth, Fort Worth. Big up Ian, and I, Ian is another man who loves the stats. Ian loves the stats. He loves the stats. Same so always that give me. Ian always telling me all these players that I should check out. And definitely, the moment is here, he has one on the agenda. Um, blessing military, you should take a look at um, Johnson Clark Harris from a statistical angle. Um, this something happened, are we linked to Johnson? Um, are we linked to him? It's a case in which that we are now um, trying to get Johnson. Um, are we trying to get Johnson? Um, yeah, so if we're trying to get Johnson, definitely. I would like to know if we're trying to get Johnson. Did something come out that I am not sure of? Are we linked with getting Johnson? Um, Aris, I should say. This guy has three middle, three last names. He has three last names. Johnson, Clark, and Harris. Wow. Big up, um, Ramon. West Harding first. Definitely. I'll touch West Harding first. Um, um, it's going to be West Harding. East. West Harding, East, then Blake. And Mr. Campbell said he wants me to have a look at um, Harris. Johnson, Clark, Harris. So we're going to look at Johnson, Clark, Harris as well. Um, you guys, every every time I go live, you guys have a name for me. Where are these players coming from? <laughs> Ian, where are all, all these players coming from? Are you are you sure you're not creating these players, Ian? Tell me, Ian, if you're if you're creating this player. I'm not sure if you're creating these players. Are you making up some name give, to give me? <laughs> big up Vincent, big up, big up, bro. Thank you very much for passing through. Uh, Ian said he's applying for his passport. Wow, um, he's applying for his passport. Whew. So definitely we're gonna have we have to have a look at him then, um, because any player that is linked with Jamaica coming to play for Jamaica, we have to look at them. All oh, their season is going so far, what they are about and what they have to offer. And if he has something to offer, definitely I would do a recommendation. But let's see how that goes. Um, then he said, you want to play for Jamaica. Okay, okay. So everyone, everyone is saying he wants to speak and um, play for Jamaica. I lie, never know some of my place today. Um, a DJ, oh DJ, oh, you just changed the name, DJ Romain. <laughs> changed the name from DJ does. Big up DJ. Um, Peter Burrow striker in hot league one. Um, in the league one, okay. All right, so definitely, people. Um, I will run through West Harding, as I said, West Harding, um, Javon Nees and Andre Blake. Then I'll definitely look at him and see what he has to offer. Because we need to know what these guys have to offer. We can't just say that here, hear about his name and say um, Johnson Harris Clark or Johnson Clark Harris is ready for Jamaica and is good enough to play for Jamaica. We have to have a look at him. We have to get down in the stats and see what he can offer 
um, to the record boys because just the same as we did for Redmond, we did it for um, Mikhail Antonio, we did it for every single player. Every single player that's linked with coming to come and play for Jamaica. We did a statistical breakdown for you guys, for everyone, for myself as well, to get a better idea of what he has to offer and how we are going to look out for him um, to come. So people, people, please remember to hit the like button. I would really appreciate it, guys. If you hit the like button, it will maybe, I think maybe allow other people to see the stream where we can, um, you guys can, and they can come in the stream as well, and we can have a, a longer dialogue. Um, Vincent, come in, come, Vincent said, um, um, look up Sterling, little brother, playing in the Chelsea under 23 squad. Whoa! As, <laughs> you guys are giving me a lot. <laughs> oh, Simon spoke about it. Simon, okay, that means if Simon speak about him, that means he's coming. Or if he's not coming, but it's credible information. And you, as you guys know, everyone knows that Simon has credible information. So um, big res respect to Simon and the work that he's doing. A lot of respect to him. Because everyone knows that Simon has very credible um, um, information. So a lot of respect to Simon doing a lot of hard work out there. Um, these Germans said 29 goals in 42 games. Whoa! 29 goals in 42 games. That sounds good. That sounds very, very good. Um, big up yourself. Big up um, Omar. A lot of respect. Thank you for jumping in. Um, keep up the good work. Definitely. Actually, the work what I'm doing is, is not for myself. It's not for myself, people. I'm doing this so all of us can share, can get it. All of us can have a look at it and see what we're working with. Because we need to know what we're working with. It's not a case in which um, we just see these players and and um, we just want to put them in the squad because they're playing for such and such. Because there are players out there who are in, with big name, playing in good squad, and then no, they're not performing. And Mikhail said, Simon said, Johnson is even willing to pay his playing fee. Playing fee. <laughs> really? Definitely. Well, that means people, um, as I said, I will look into him because if he's willing to play, pay his own playing fair, that means he's interested to play for us. And since that's, it's, maybe it's at, that's League 2, uh, Petersburg is at League 2, I think it's League 2, that means if he's in League 2, he's seeking the opportunity to get big, to get known on the bigger stage. So people, enough chatting, I've been talking for the longest while now, let me go over to uh, West Harding um, as Someone said West Harden should, should be the first person I should touch on. So let's go over to West Harden. Um, let me tell you from now, people. The reason why um, West Harden is here is actually not nothing good, but um, partially bad news. <laughs> partially bad news, people. But we are going to have a look at him and see what he has to offer. But um, West Harden had a, 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 a nightmare. He had a nightmare today, a very, very bad game from him. It's not the worst, it's not the worst, but it was a poor performance. And from his standard, I believe that um, definitely we could have gotten more from him. Um, he played out, it was played out of position. That's the first thing. First thing was played out of position. And out of position, you um, have to be using his wrong foot and more in attacking um, position as well. So these are the three things. These are the three things that were against West Harden today. That is the reason why he had such a poor performance. It's not loading up. It is not loading up. I'm going to check it back. So these are the things that are leading. Um, big up Jerome 7876. Um, as you guys know, don't. that's not my phone number, people. <laughs> Definitely not my phone number. But big up people, big up everybody who's coming in. And Mikhail said, League One at Tony's former um, team, Petersboro. Okay. As Mikhail said, League One. Okay, Mikhail. So, peep, I'm trying to go over there, but I'm having difficulties. I don't know why, because I have a bad laptop. This laptop has no use. <laughs> this laptop has no use at all. But I'm, it's what I've been using for the longest while. And I can't let it go because it's been keeping me going. But definitely, as soon as I get the opportunity to upgrade, I will definitely try my best to upgrade. But that's not for any time now. Um, um, Bala Kick, big up, Bala Kick 90. Big up, I salute you, bro. Everyone in the, in the chat, as you guys know, this is a military squad. I salute you all. Big up everyone who came in or who's passing by. Um, you better make sure say him, grades good. <laughs> um, he, he grades are good. Great, Afi good. If we're going to look at him, the great must, must, must good. Definitely.
Um, Jerome 876 says, Simon said, Old Gates will play for us only if England does not select him for the Euro 2020. And he gets to meet with, um, and he gets to meet with Dal Dalton Wynn. All right, so the thing about it with that is, there's a strong chance of Holgate playing for us. The difference with Holgate playing for us right now that I see is that um, he's included, he's not included in the senior team. He's not included in the senior team. And if he was, if he was that important to England, they would have included him in the senior team. And right at this moment, I think it's best if Holgate take the opportunity that Jamaica is giving to them, to him, and grab it by the scruff of, his, of the neck and, and just deal with it as, as according. Because there are so much second-string defenders waiting for the opportunity for England. Um, Gomez, Mings, um, Maguire. There's so much defenders, people. It's going to be difficult. The defense line for England is complicated, people. It's not like in the attacking turn where you can see young players who are um, booming with confidence and those type of things. All right, so people, um, we're going to look at um, West Harding. The game that he played today, we have to have a look at the game that he played today. Um, as you guys know, he's a defender, a right-footed defender. He's a right-footed defender. Bear that in mind, people. We're going to go over to the game that he played. Um, it's today, right? Um, definitely, yes, it was today. The game was today, people. So we're going to go have a, a more in-depth look at it. So um, one of the good things is that he's been featured in, all, in, in almost every single game this season. Almost every single game he has been featured in this season. So that is something to take um, a positive from, which means that he's consistent and he's a player that the coach really, really loves and uh, put a lot of trust into. So we have to look at things on a different, diverse level. Um, and break down things at a different level as well, just the same. So it's low no Norwich, as you guys can see, Norwich is coming back to the Premier League. Um, we have Watford, seems as if they're coming back to the Premier League. Um, Swansea, Brentford, Swansea, Brentford, and Bournemouth. Swansea, Brentford, Bournemouth, and Barnsley are going to be fighting for that spot. Okay, so guys, look at this. As you guys can see, West Harding is playing over on the left-hand side as a left fullback. He's playing on the left-hand side as a left fullback. So this is one of the, the, the circumstances that he's playing against. Playing on the left-hand side as a left fullback in which is not his best position. Also, play, he has to use his opposite leg. So normal case, your fullback are more likely diverse, can use both left and right foot. But in this case, um, West Harding is predominantly a right footer. His whole career has been using this right foot. And most of the time, 90% of the time, he's been used in his right foot. And he's been deployed as a right center back. Possible one or two times, fit in as a right back. But definitely what we're seeing right now is that um, he's been slotted in the left, left, left sided full back. What we're going to do, we're going to look at his stats and what happened um, during this time period and how, he's, how he's, his game panned out. Um, as you guys can see, definitely as you guys can see, um, the heat map, if you guys can see clearly, the heat map has a bit on the left, also has a bit on the right, which is telling you that he has been alternating throughout the game. He has been moving from left to right throughout the game, but predominantly over on the left-hand side. So let's move through the stats um, aspect of it. Um, he played 77 minutes, people. Um, he had 51 touches, accurate pass, uh, 15 out of 25, completing the game at 60%. Accurate with a pass accuracy, accurate, with a pass accuracy of sixty percent, and definitely, people. When we went through um West Hard, uh, West Hard in passing stats, it is normally in the bracket of the 80, 79 to eighty five region, and now we're seeing him at sixty, which significantly can tell you guys that there's a big drop in performance right there. Just the passing aspect of alone can tell you that there's a significant drop um in ability right there. So key pass is zero. Um, crosses, um, he attempted five crosses with zero completed. So that is showing you guys, if he's playing as a fullback, you have a fullback, and that particular fullback cannot get across inside of the box. That is telling you that he's not the best crosser of the ball. Um, he's, not, he's also not the best... Um, or, um, he's not the best... Um, um, what, what do I call it? 
deliverer of the ball as well. So why did the, the coach force to play West Harden over on the left wing back side? When I was watching today, he seems tormented. I didn't watch it, the, 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 I didn't watch the, the live game. I had to do the rewatch because I said this evening I want to look at some, some reggae ball play that played today. Um, so I can do my reggae boy review, daily review. Also, then do my week, my my reggae boy watch, which I do on Monday. So I do my I try to do my reggae boy daily review every single day if I can. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe at this particular time. No, not on Fridays. Monday to, to Thursday eve um, night. Um, so tomorrow you guys won't be getting a reggae boy a, 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 a daily update on the reggae boys. You won't get that tomorrow. What you will get, you'll get it Monday. You get a reggae boy watch Monday, people. We're over all, or maybe four to five, of the reggae boy's most outstanding performance. The reason why I do that is I have told you guys week in, week out the same thing. I want to keep a track of the reggae boys and what they're doing right now, how well they're playing, and leading up to the Gold Cup. So we don't want, when the Gold Cup come, um, every week we're, we're talking about Leon Moore putting in um, 10 out of 10 performance. Every week we're talking about um, Jamal Low putting 10, 10 out of 10 performance. And when we're in the Gold Cup, we see no Jamal Low, um, we see no Liam Moore in the, in, in the team itself. So this is what we want to do. We want to give you an idea of what we're looking for when the Gold Cup arrives. So this is going to give you guys a bit idea of how well these players are playing on a weekly basis. So it's not like one you hear about a one player and it's like you don't, you don't even remember him. There's so much players out there right now that I haven't spoken about. Um, I haven't gone, I haven't gone, I haven't gone in depth on Mike Maggie. Um, there's also Peter Lee Vassell. Um, who else? I think it's um, Kevon. Ooh, Williams is Kevon. Devon Williams. Devon Williams. People, there are so much players that I've, I've done. And I will take my time and run through some of these players. But definitely, people, once you come on the show, you will be seeing player stats. You will be seeing um, things about players. Let me go through the rest of this now. Um, he attempted eight long balls, completed three of those. Um, no shots on target, no shot, no dribble attempt, none of those things. Um, Brown Dews, he encountered in three and he won none. He encountered in two aerial dues and won one of those, which is also okay. He lost possession 24 times, people. Can you imagine playing football with someone and you are attacker? And each time you go ahead, you're breaking the line and you're expecting expecting your wingers to get that ball to you, he loses the ball. People, I, I let me tell you, that would be very much unfair. As a striker, I'm, I'm personal, so I'm a striker. And every time I'm going forward, I'm expecting the ball to play in the channel so I can go for him. But definitely, um, this is showing you that what this right, I'm looking at right now, the statistics for West Arden is telling me that this is a position that we should not practice or try to get or force them into. This is the reason why when you have particular players, you don't force them into position that they are not comfortable with. That is something I don't like. It's like fitting a square shape thing in a round hole. It's like fitting a square, a, a square thing in a round hole. So people, in losing the ball 24 times, people, that is not, so, that is not to happen. Especially an, an attacking player. That is, that, that is, that is going to cause turnover and that immediately that, that, that is the opposition going towards your goal. Can you imagine you lose the ball 24 times? How much time that you will lead the opposition to go to your goal? They have a strong potential of scoring. They have a strong um, um, opportunity to score when each time you lose the ball. And when, you, when you're losing the ball that much, they will start to target you. They will target you because you have now become the weak link in the team and you are easy, easy one to be targeted. So um, he, com he, was, he committed two, two fouls and he was fouled zero time. He made two clearances, um, zero shot block, um, two interceptions, and zero tackle. And he was dribbled past once. And this is, this is what I'm showing you. The reason why he was dribbled past is because people saw that he was a weak link and let's pressure that side. So that is what happened. Because these are, the not, these are not the normal West Harding stats. These are not West Harding stats, not the West Harding that we know and that we know can deliver. So people, this is not the good stats um, for West Harding. We hope that um, this is just a one-off bad game. And I think it has a lot to do with the possession that the coach uh, put him in on as a left wing back. He's a right-sided defender, right-sided central defender. Um, one and two times he would play as a right back. One and two times, but not so much. But definitely, it was a poor outing from him. 
he wasn't the worst on the pitch, but it was definitely a poor outing from him. So we're going to move over now to Jevon Heath, someone that we have spoken about in a, lo in a long time, someone I haven't, I haven't even seen in the media. Um, but people, first I'm telling he's in, or he's in exceptional goal scoring form. He's in a very, very good goal scoring form. And I'm going to reload the stats to show you guys what is happening. Let me run through some of the comments. Uh, uh, so, um, August uh, McDonald, player behind him as a left back. Yeah, and he's not the best as well. <laughs> um, he's actually a youngster. Let me see what is happening here. Players not coming up. This stats um, shows, see, this stats shows can be useful to tap up. I don't think Tapa will have the time to um, look at these these YouTube channels, people. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if even people. I'm not sure if, if anyone even watch me <laughs> um, do these things. I, I doubt anyone watch me do this. That's this. That's analysis, brother. People. I'm, I'm be honest. I I doubt people watch me do this stats analysis because a lot of people find stats boring. A lot of people find stats boring, but I find it exciting because it teach me. Um, what the players have to offer, what they are doing. That is the reason why I love that. So, people, um, Jevan Heath's um, profile is coming up. We are going to run through it. Um, 24 times, real frustration. And exactly. If you're, playing a, if, if you're playing as a striker, right, and each time your midfielder would receive the ball and he would lose the ball, you're going to be frustrated because you're going to make that run. And obviously, when you don't get the ball to make that particular run, you will be frustrated. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. All right, so people, first thing I you heard you heard me counting. Um, what I count is that um Jevon Heath in his last ten games he scored seven goals. He scored seven goals in his last ten games. Which is good. People, in his last 10 games, he has scored seven goals, people. Um, I think that is good stats. He's a striker, 26 years old, pretty much young, um, left footed as well. He's quite sharp. He's really, really sharp, but he's, he's kind of those um stumpy type of person. His body his body build is kind of bulky like. So um let me go over to transfer market. So people in his last 10 games, he scored seven goals. Um so far, score ratings of 8, 7.9, 8.1, 7.2. And in, in one of those games, he scored a break as well. Yes, he had a, he had a very, very bad game. A poor, poor game. Omar Morgan, um, big up, bro. Big up, Omar. Thank you for jumping in. Real talk, bro. Everything you said, are Yeah, it is. Uh, I I play football, but you don't have to be a footballer to know that you're you're not supposed to lose the ball 24 times in one game. <laughs> in one game, you lose the ball 24 times. That is extreme frustration. And guess what? As as well, he's playing at a fullback position, a, a wing back. If you're playing the wing back position, it means that you're going to be in the attacking third quite often. You will you will be one of those attackers. Yes, you'll be a defender, but you'll also be one of those attackers. He made five attempts to cross the ball, and not one was successful. Not one was successful, which means that he's failing to provide for the strikers. He's, he's putting the defense under immense pressure with when, when he loses the ball. So he had a very, very poor game. Big up coach, big up coach is next. Thank you for jumping in the house. A lot of respect, bro. A lot of respect. Um, Roshan Tomlin said, big up, big up Roshan. Big up as well. Mikhail said, I think they watch you. I I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it, Mikhail. Um, Tomlin said, I think Bailey should get the captain. Oh, for the regular boys. Oh. Um, the, I think the right person has the captain bar, armband. 
I think um, Blake is the right person to have a captain on board because um, he made, Blake made a comment at the initial stage about um, being patriotic, about players being patriotic. Um, we might take it the wrong way, but Blake is looking at it at his side where he's playing from the heart and the desire that he has played for the reggae boys. So we can look at it that and also looking at that he's not accepting them. But he is accepting them, but he just wants people to have a, a better understanding of how he feels. So that is it. So there's two sides to the story, not always one. Then he said, um, so we so we are we know people we watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that tennis. I'm talking about uh, because he said um, Tapa. <laughs> he said Mr. Whitmore would want um, to see these stats. But I'm saying that um, the coaches um, that Tapa work with, I doubt they are the ones they, they are going to be seeing this. Most people are seeing this right now are people like us who love football, who love to talk about football. Like, people like you, tennis, who love football. <laughs> see, you make, you make coaches just laughing at me. <laughs> uh, Big up Ryan NFC, big up bro, thank you for jumping in. <laughs> big up Delano, big up, big up Delano for coming in as well. Richard Samuel, big up, big up Richie, big up, lot of respect people, a lot of respect. Um, Anthony Sport, big up coach, big up and big up of course. <laughs> Anthony Sport, a big up military. Anthony, I think you're big up right now. <laughs> Anthony, how much big up you have to say? All right, so I have no clue what is happening here. The stream you are taking so long, sorry about the load. Giving Bailey the Arban is like giving a bombing it. Not a true leader, right? We need true leaders, people. People, we need we, we don't want to give the person with the name. We don't want to give the person with the name. The armband. We want to give the leader. We want to give the leader the armband, not the person, not the, the, the player with the name. I have no clue what is happening here. So I'm loading, loading it up. Good work you're doing, bro. Um, big up. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. A lot of respect. Sean, big up, Sean. <laughs> big up, Sean, for jumping in. Bailey could not be the captain. I won't say Bailey could not be the captain because he has he has a good personality, which I deem that he can go can be the captain. But I am not saying is he is um I'm not saying this, but definitely I think so. Mr. Special Edition. Oh, alive. <laughs> yes, it's alive, bro. Is it showing? Is it not showing like a life? Is it not showing like a life? People, we have a few players we want to run to. Um, someone in the chat told me to look at um um is it John Johnson Clark Harris? The, the player with the stream um last name. So someone asked me to look at Johnson Clark Harris. Because they said that um, they would like to see the stats. So we'll be looking at Johnson Clark Harris as well. Um, but we are going to run to um, Jevon Hees right now. Then now we are going to look at um, Andre Blake because they played two, two games recently. No one spoke about it. So that is the reason why I'm going to talk about it. Then now um, I'll be going over to look at um, Johnson Clark Harris, what he has to offer, what can he bring to a regular boy. Someone asked me about him. So they informed me that Simon Preston. Um, did a video on him that he's willing to come and play. So they asked me to do a, 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 a tactical insight, a tactical breakdown of the player. And that is what I'm going to do because I didn't even know, um, I didn't get any update on my phone. So I never saw it. Um, I didn't even start on Twitter as well because I am I follow Simon on Twitter. So definitely, I think I would have seen that as well. But I would, have, I would definitely run through it, people. Let me run through it right now. So it's up. I'm going to bring it up so you guys can see what he's doing. I'm going to run through some of the comments. Vincent said, I don't think he um, will be picked for the Gold Cup. Well, um, he played 10 games and scored 7 goals in 10 games. That is relatively okay for me, I think. That's, it means that he's finding back of the net. He's finding back of the net. Um, I think it's between Bailey, Blake, Lowe and Taxi. Oh, Taxi has a personality. He's a very vocal person um, on and off the pitch. So um, he represents what he believes. 
um, Blake as well, very, very strong demeanor, a, a presence. Blake has an aura about him. He has an aura about him like, like he's the man and the leader and, and the true leader, like, like, the, like an omega, like an alpha. He has an alpha aura about him. So that is the reason why it is easier to swing towards giving Blake uh, the captain armband because of his aura, his alpha aura. And I think that he drives respect from the players and he also respects the players always. So that is the reason why I think that Blake is a preferred person. And he's such a vocal person, but definitely. Um, um, J.D. White told me that he, he recognized Blake as someone that he wanted to be like, and I respect that. And I said, if you are on, um, I spoke, up, spoke to him, I said, if you are on him, that is what you need to do. Watch him, take away all his, his just watch his weaknesses, watch his strength. Master his strength and better all his weaknesses, and you will possibly be a better keeper. So that is how you get better than people, people. That is how, if you have a rival, the only way you get better than your rival is by mastering their skill and then better their weaknesses. So if you master, if you master whatever they can do and mean that you can do it better, then their weakest aspect, you better, you better that, which means that they, they can't compete with you again. It is psychology, people. I studied. I studied psychology. It is psychology. Um, he just come in the squad. Okay. I thought this was a repeat. <laughs> I didn't know. It should be showing live. It should definitely be showing live, Mr. Special Edition. Uh, but thank you for being here, Mr. Special Edition. Um, East is performing good. Yes, um, on things work. East is performing good. He's putting a good performance. He's putting some good performance. <laughs> Sean said, the keeper is captain and that's final. <laughs> Let me see what's going to happen. It's taking a while to load up. Um, stats keep players on track also. So it's definitely not a bad thing. I agree. I agree. It is important for us to know um, what these players are doing and how they are performing. It is very, very important that we know these things. We have to know these things because um, what this does is teach us um, to look at things not only on player name, but what their performance is like. People... And we have 25 persons in it in it in the chat um on the live as well um it is not hard for you guys to come off the chat click off the chat and hit the like button i really appreciate you guys um please bring it over to at least 40 likes bring it up to 40 likes i really really appreciate it people a lot of respect just bring it to 40 likes people big up um, Barnett. a lot of respect thank you for jumping in um sean Sutherland, you just have to <laughs> You just have to so I'm just letting you run with my team like you show. <laughs> right. Yes, I am a gooner. I am a proud gooner. A proud, proud gooner. Um, look at it. Means he's a proud um, Red Devils. <laughs> Means he's a proud Red Devils. <laughs> and I, I, I think I'll be meeting him in finals. I, th I feel like I'll be meeting him in the finals. Um, good work for you. Good work you're doing, bro. Thank you, um, Omar. Um, we need to know about all the ballers that play for us. Makes sense for the coach and and we the Jamaica. Never stop doing um good work for us. Definitely, I thank you for I thank you very much, bro. Um, I'm not doing this for myself only. I am doing it for myself as well, but I'm also I'm also trying my best to show you guys what I think and this part of the football. Because we look at football in general concepts, most of us look at football. Um just on what we see and the, the name that we hear. So we hear a name called automatically we think this is the best baller right across the board. And then when we compare them, when we compare these guys, um, we you would realize that what we are seeing, they're different from what the stats is showing. One person has 15 goals, the other person has 10. Yeah? One person has five or six, the other person has, has, has nine. So these things are really, really important. All right, so um, let me see. Hopefully, you guys are seeing right now. So this is what's happening, people. Um, he has 17 appearances with 10 goals, 
and one assist. So in 17 games, he has 11 goal contribution in those 17 games. Um, as you guys can see, his starting 11 percentage is at 100 percent, which means that he starts all 17 games. Um, he completed 19 minutes, um, averaging 90 minutes every game, which is very, very 94 minutes in that region. Um, goal participation. 39 percent for the for the team and if he's contributed 10 11 out of 17 it means that the team possibly could be scoring a lot of goals so these are some of the things you have to look at people and we have to consider it and for the national team as you guys can see he has made 13 appearances and has two goals mm, relatively good his debut was on um january 30 2018 so these are fairly good stats people um won't be turning for those stats. Um, as you guys can see, this is the breakdown. Hopefully, you guys are seeing the breakdown. This is the breakdown, people. Um, 16 appearances in, in the Premier Division. 10 goals and 12 appearances. Uh, um, also, 12 appearances in the Apertura Division. Division Apertura. Um, 10 goals in um, Clasura um, Division and one in Apertura division. But in total, 28 games, 11 goals, and one assist. That is fairly good return. Um, he's scoring relatively good amount of goals right now, and I think that he can he can definitely better his trade. Um, we'll be looking at the next player we'll be looking at now is the captain himself, Andre Blake, who wants to see what he has to offer and what is good. Big up, um, Carvel Ray Francis. Thank you for jumping in. I salute you. Um, big up, welcome back to the military. Welcome to the military squad, the military platoon. If you guys have, have any idea what that is, uh, Unseen Sports TV said East is so aggressive, and I like that from a forward. He anticipates lo a loose balls well. Yes, which means that when a player can anticipate um, lose um, loose ball, it means that he has a very good um, I um, IQ. He can read into the game even before things happen, which is good, which is very very good. Um, I'm going over to Andre Blake right now. So he's the last player that I want to cover before I go into the freelancers that you guys tell me about. Um, as you guys know, Andre Blake playing his football at Philadelphia Union. Um, moving over now to the CONCACAF. To the CONCACAF Champions League, people. We are covering the CONCACAF Champions League and what he's doing in the CONCACAF Champions League right now. So that was that's what one cover. Um, then I said 24 likes, watching 22 likes. People, get the like, like button up, people. Get the like, like button up, please. I would really, really appreciate it. Big up, Craig Smith. Thank you, thank you for jumping in. I know you're talking about St. Richard, who plays for Jamaica football team. <laughs> Obviously. When Roof come to Jamaica, I don't think he's going, um, going to lose the starting. All right, so the thing is, people, at, no, at this point, Kemar Roof, um, I think I'll do a tactical breakdown between Kemar Roof and Mikel Antonio. I think that's a good tactical breakdown. Tell me what you think about that, guys. Um, tell me what you think about it. Shimel Queen. Thank you. I hope I don't pro I pronounce the name properly. Is it Shimel Queen? Um, please forgive me if I don't pronounce the name properly. Um, why do people think that a system of play is important. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Miss Queen, you're asking, the person that you're asking about system of play is someone who duly believes in system of play. <laughs> you're asking someone that. So maybe you don't believe that system of play is important. What I can do, I can explain to you why I, me, believe that system of play is very much crucial. Um, first thing first, why system of play is important is all the top. Why well, well, the first thing I miss up anyway. The first thing I think about system of play. All the top coaches right across the globe, for every single coaching aspect, implement a system of play. Every coach, it is imperative as a coach you have a system of play. A system of play is your identity. That's two. System of play is your identity. If you don't have a system, you play any old how. You just play football. Marino, 
Warren play a defensive system. He play attacking in some games, but predominantly he plays a de defensive system. He defends in two, um, two banks of four, um, four men behind the ball, and he have two strikers roaming, trying to create problems. That is the reason why Son and Kane are so important to his system. Then them, them Bailey, the Celso, um, Sissoko, all these guys help out with the defense. Then they break. He goes for the physical fast players. I can be wrong, people. I can be wrong. You guys can quote. I can you can quote me and say I am wrong. Or I don't know football. But these are the three that, that those are the first three things. Um identity. Um I'm gonna I'm losing my mind. I said identity, uh um all the big coach use it, identity, all the top coaches use it, and system of play brings you goals and good defending. Oh, one is bring you goal and four good defending. So you can have a defensive system. You can have an attacking system. The formation that you play can dictate your system as well. Um, so let me get let me elaborate a bit more on that now. So for example, um, Jurgen Klopp plays a particular system. Um, four three three. Everyone know Jurgen Klopp plays a four three three. Um, he plays a four three three with a high press. He uses his fullback as a creative element. He does not use technical players in the midfield. So he has work pass in the midfield. People who can retrieve the ball, get re receive the ball, retrieve the ball, and create turnovers. Wijnaldum is not the most technical. Anderson is not the most technical. Milner, um, Fabino, Chamberlain, these guys are not the most technical. And they are even Navigator. Navigator has a bit of technical ability, but they are not the most technical. These guys are work pass. They work the entire midfield. The creative element of Jurgen Klopp's system comes from wing back. That is where the creative element comes from. Every now and then, you will see a player like Van Dijk playing those over-the-top ball to get the strike in the end. But they play a high-press system and create from the wing. No, they, in, they also use inverted strikers, inverted forwards, Salah and Mane. The reason why they are referred to as inverted forward or strikers is because you won't find them going down to the wing, to the byline, getting crosses in. They will go, they will cut inside. They all they do is cut inside to get off their shot. They will not go to the byline. The, the person who goes to the byline is the fullback. Um, that would be Trent or Robertson going to the byline, go beyond um Salah or Mane. So Trent will go beyond Salah and uh, um Robertson go beyond Mane. To try and get the crosses in, but you will not find Salah Armani going to the byline and getting those crosses in. You won't find that quite so often because that is not the system. So, from that particular system, Liverpool won the Champions League and went, um, went um, on a mad run in the, in the Premier League. That is what they did. No, this is how important the system is. They changed Jurgen Club, brought in Thiago Alcantara, and it changed his system. He started to play more possession-based football. Less attack, less gun ball attack, and more possession-based football. What that does, it destabilizes destabilize this particular system that's implemented over a four-year period. It changed, it made one change to that particular system in the style of play, and it destabilized the system because that is not what they do. They don't play from the middle. When the likes of um, Thiago is holding up the ball, um, Ma Salah and Mane already break past the defense line and maybe is in offside position, then Thiago may have to hold up the plate to try and find another option. Um, people, I can run. But these are this is from my analysis that I've seen and what I've, um, I've understand. I've done studies on it as well. But I can be wrong. People don't take that. I am absolutely right. I am not saying I'm right. This is from my observation, my opinion. Now, um, on a normal day, without Kevin Alcantara, Midfielder Wijnaldum, um, Fabino, Robertson, and um, Trent Arnold will get the ball one time in, um, beating the, the defense line with a one time cross from deep or, or going to the byline. But the moment Thiago Alcantara receives the ball, he takes one, two touches because he wants to keep the ball ticking. That is not what um, Liverpool play, and that is the reason why Liverpool team would break down so much time and then they would concede goals. Um, let me see what the chat is saying. Delana said, um, hopefully that gives you a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Um, I can be wrong, people. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm right, but I can be wrong. This is, if you're coming to my show, 
you're coming for statistical element you're coming from um statistical breakdown tactical breakdown stats and statistical element of gameplay this is what we do people um liverpool when they finish a game last season they're averaging like 25 crosses per game this season it's like 14 or 15 because they're not they're trying to create from the middle this is and that's what being that is what is killing their team so last last season they're creating from the wing um compressing the midfield the middle part and then creating from the wing they, they'll do a lot of crossing um they win the second ball they're the best team they were the best team in the league last season on second recoveries um like when the ball dropped first and then they pounce on it that is the reason why they have the best pressing system as well um, then I said a system of play, um, our style of play is important because it is a way of control and help most players adjust to a type of play. Exact. That is a good breakdown as well. Thank you very much, Alan. Let me run through some more. Um, system of play is important because it gives you an idea and tactics how you want to play the soccer. Exactly. Um, then I said, Joseph don't really play a defensive football. He more go for a counter like he did at Magic. Ozil run under and Magic can't do that at first. Exactly. <laughs> uh, defense ball is what Burnley play. <laughs> you want to see party bus? Jose Marino invented party bus. Marino invented party bus. You want to know a Marino at a Porto? A Marino, come on. A Marino at the Inter, come on. <laughs> a Marino Porto and Real Madrid people, I'm telling you, even when Marino was at um, Manchester United, part the bus. Marino at Chelsea, part the bus. Liverpool system played um, Firmino uh, at Cam and Mane and Salah played at centre forward and full box play as wingers. Uh, yes, exactly. I rather the Leeds on attack. <laughs> I would love Jamaica to play like Leeds. No, Sean. <laughs> I would never want Jamaica to play like Leeds. Leeds don't prioritize defending. Defending has, defending has nothing to do with Leeds. They don't practice that. That is the reason why Leeds either get bashed for four enough. Are uh, they beat a team four? That's Leeds. There's no in between. We don't want to keep the game more compact. We want to, we want to kill or be killed. Still, I want a military work rate. Big up sentiments, FC. A lot of respect. Thank you guys for jumping in. <laughs> Big up the said, um, Sean, you have to have a good defense. I can't trust this Jamaican team to play at Leeds football. And one of the things you guys don't know about Leeds is that in kilometer. And, minute, and and miles com, miles completed and press they they are average averaging maybe in top five in the league in kilometer and press Leeds United are averaging in top five in the league so it is I can't use I can't implement for that Leeds system to implement with the regular boys I doubt these guys can manage that <laughs> I doubt these guys can manage that that's why I love them <laughs> Sean. These Jamaicans won't, this Jamaican team that we're putting together won't manage that lead system. They will not manage that lead system. That lead system, high intensity press, gun ho attack. Um, Sean said, um, if Arsenal do like Leeds, we would win the league goals. <laughs> I wouldn't want Arsenal to do like Leeds. Arsenal is playing very good football right now. We're keeping the defense solid. We're also attacking in, in, in the right numbers. Um, we will look at that soon. We will look at that soon. Ian said, did you look at um, John St. Clark? No, I, you, you come back in the right time, Ian. No, I haven't yet. Um, I'm going over now to um, Adrian Blake. Andre Blake. Why am I saying Adrian Blake? Andre Blake. And then now um, we can look at... Then now we can look at um, John St. Clark Harris. And Ian, this guy has three last names. Johnson Clark and Hearts. That's three last names. That's that's three last names. Come on. Why what is he doing three last names? Um so people uh, as you guys can see. This is um Andre Andre Blake um in the Champions League 2021. He's up in the age right now, 9.3 centimeter in height. Um there's a few things we can look at. So we're gonna look at his performance. Um let's look at his overall performance now. Then we can look at um how well he's played um in those two particular games. So totally played two games and we started all two games, both 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 games, and he completed 90 minutes. Not featured in team of me. So goalkeeping conceded zero goals. Very good. Conceded zero goals. Um didn't have to make um, saving the penalty. 
So it averages 0 0.5 saves per 90, which is relatively low, which is telling me that he, he has a very good defense in front of him. Because if he's conceded, if he's um, making 0 0.5 saves, that's basically like two or three shots per game, like two or three or two or three game, um, saves per game, which is relatively low. Um, successful runouts, he has done any of that. So there's not much to take away from, from Andre Blake right now. There's not much. Um, let's look at his 28 touches, which means that if, if a keeper has 28 touches throughout a game, they're dominating the game. They're retaining possession, they're creating turnovers, and they're dominating. So accurate pass, 9.5, uh, 40%. Relatively okay. Accurate pass in its own half, 4.0. 4, 4 okay as well. So these are relatively okay stats for, for, uh, for him. Um, let me go over now to the seventh of April where he played his first game. I'm going to look at the stats for that particular game. Um, so for score rating, um, let, ooh, let me get stuff of it. Let me get it. So you guys can see now. Um, so for score rating 90, um, one saves. Exactly. So I told you that he was having a smaller portion, a small amount of saves. Um, high claims, one. Touches 32, we had more touches in this. Um, accurate pass is 10 out of 28, which is poor, but we have to consider that when he kicks when he kick kick um kick out the ball from a goal kick, it is considered as a pass. So um he's having a good start of the of the CONCACAF Champions um Champions League now. We we can we can <laughs> we can actually uh, move now move on now to the, the long main player. The triple, the triple last name player that Ian wants to see. So I'm bringing up the issue, the, the player Ian. Um, sentiment said MG give me a joke, <laughs> clap me in too long. <laughs> His name is Johnson Clark Harris. So obviously he married and he took the, he took his wife's name. And maybe has like three middle names. Maybe. <laughs> Chu Chusa. Chipper Bar and surname. Never seen that before. The <laughs> guy has three names. I would like to know his middle name. Maybe Tony one week. Or Monday, Tuesday, something like, something like that. Okay, so the players of people, um, with the attack, with the attack of Jamaica have. Why go in the past with defense when you can outscore your outscore the team? Not a good idea, Sean. To try and outscore the team, all teams. You have to identify certain games that you have to sit back in and try to be um, composed. So people, let me run through this player. Um, we have some very good score. His lowest total score rating is actually 6.4. Um, 7.3, 8.9, 7.5, 7.9. So he plays at Petersburg, League One. Uh, Peterborough, League One. Nationality English. Um, he's 26 years old. Born on the 20th, 20th of July, 1994. Uh, position forward. His strengths are positioning. Direct free kick. So we have a set piece player, people. We have a set piece taker. When last have Jamaica had a set piece taker? When last Jamaica had a very, very good set piece taker? Uh, finishing. And his weakness is passing and ball control. Ooh. He's definitely a Jamaican. <laughs> um, so people look at his heat map. As you guys can see on his heat map. The, in the center circle here, in the 18 yard box, is very, very dense. <laughs> Coming at me, Nigerian Bridget with 10, 10 names, a whole heap of names. <laughs> All right, sentiments. <laughs> yeah, he, he has a lot of names. Some people look at that. Um, Ian, hopefully, you have seen this, Ian. Um, you can see right here what we're looking at. He has um, he's played 40 games. 40 games in total, minutes per game, 86. That is a lot. That is a lot of minutes, people. Team of the week, seven. Whoa. He has been featured in Team of the Week seven times, people. That is a lot as well. Um, goals. Let's move, move over now. Let's move over to the goal. So we're talking about a striker. Let's see what he has to offer. So he has 27 goals in 40 appearances, people. 
27 goals in 40 appearances, averaging scoring frequency, 128 minutes per per, per, per goal between each goal. That's like um, um 1.5 game for every 1.5 game he scores a goal. Yeah, 1.5. Yes, every 1.5 games he scores a goal, which is good. Um, goals per game 0 0.7 exactly. Um, shots per game 2.7. Um, so people, this is the first thing that I realized. So when you see a player averaging 2.7 shots per game, it means that he's a high risk, high reward player. He takes a lot of shots, anticipating that one will go in. That is a good trait. The players that score the most goals are the one that takes the most shots, and the one they are the one that normally make um miss the most chances. <laughs> The players, people, listen to me keenly and go and research it for yourself. If you think I am lying, go and research it for yourself. The players that take the most shots are the players that normally scores most goals. They are also the players that miss the most big chances. Go and research it for yourself. Go and research it. Take, exclude Messi and Ronaldo. Please excuse me, exclude, exclude Messi and Ronaldo. These guys, um, these guys are out of it. <laughs> Messi and Ronaldo are totally out of it. So don't put them in it. So um, let's go now. Um, shots per, per, per game. One um, shots per game. Um, 2.7. Shots on target per game, which is 1.3. That is very, very good. Averaging almost every two, every game. He hit, he, he hit the shot on target maybe two times. Big chances missed 21. Exactly. So that's this one saying, people. If he averages... Um, 2.7 shots, right? Let's do the calculation. So that's basically three. So he plays 40 games and he averages three shots per game, which means that um, in, in you take 120 shots in those 40 games. So I'm working at, at average 120 shots in those 40 games. Shot on target 1.3. So basically, out of those 140 shots, out of those 120, I'm sorry, 120 shots, for he take about 50 are on target. 50 would be on target. 50 would definitely be on target. Big up Ryan NFT, smash the like button as Ryan said, people, lot of respect. Work never stop. Work never stop. <laughs> never, never stop. Uh, big up Omar as well. Um, I thought I, I know that you came in already. So people, that is what I'm saying. These are the guys. These are the high output guys. They take a lot of shots. They score a lot of goals, but they miss a lot of chances. I can tell you, even Ivan Tony has a lot of miss, big miss chances, a lot, because they are the one who are getting in a dangerous position, and they will not always convert. But this is also telling me that the team that he plays for. Is a very good team in that league, providing those opportunities. Providing those opportunities. Um, let's go over now to the passing stats. I mean, three assists. Um, he has a high touch. He's a high high touch striker, which means that he's possibly one of those type of striker that will come deep and and get involved with play. So um, touches. He has three assists and twenty-seven goals. So he's averaging thirty goal contribution. In 40 games. That is that is very, very good, also, people. That is also good. 30 goals in 40 games, magnificent record. Um, big chances created 10. As I said, that is showing you that, I, that he has the potential to make those um that they, those um incisive passes and be clinical with, with, with those passes as well. Um 35 touches is telling you that for a striker to have 35 touches, that is telling you that he's involved in the game a lot. Averaging 35 touches, 35.8 touches per 90, means that he's involved in the game. Maybe he's one of those strikers, as I said. Um, it would get in, make those passes, and get involved in the game. Um, key passes, 0 0.90 passes, very good as well. No accurate pass per game, 11.5 at 55%. Um, that is significantly low, people. That is significantly low. 55%, I think that is an area that you have to work on. Because if he's playing in a lower league and his passing ratio is that low, it would be difficult for him when he hit the bigger league to 
cope. So you have to work on that. Um, I think that there's room for improvement in that area. There's definitely room for improvement in that area. So you have to increase on that. That is relatively low. Um, that is lower than Mikel Antonio. That's lower than Kemal Roof. Um, that's lower than Javan East. That's also lower than um, Ivan Tony, um, Andre Gray, Shamar Nicholson. So all of our six or seven strikers that I've named, that passing average is basically the lowest I've seen. That is the lowest I've seen. So that is something that, that's worked on. Accurate passing is own half 2.6, um, 68, 65% completion. Accurate passing opposition half 8.9 at 53% completion. Um, accurate long balls 0.5 at 55%. Um, accurate chip passes 0.4 at 47%. Um, and accurate crosses 0.0 at 13%. So these are areas that you definitely can work on. Um, hopefully Ian is seeing this. Hopefully Ian is seeing this. So defending, he's a striker. I won't go into the defending stats. I'm going to move over now to the other stats, which I think um, may suit him. So successful dribbles 0.3 at 48%. Um, total duels 1, 7.2. So he's engaged in a lot of duels, which is very, very important. Something I like as well for my strikers. Um, at 42%, ground duels one, 2.5 at 41%. Aerial duels one, 4.8 at 42% as well. Um, possession loss 14 times. Uh, that is relatively okay for a striker. Because the striker. So folk are um, false. Um, 1.7, commits 1.7 fault. Um, was for two point, um, averaging two, two fouls per game and teaching outside, which is very, very good. And yellow card is 0 0.3. So these are the statistics that cover, um, that covers Johnson Clark Harris. Um, goal scoring wise, that he has good statistics, excellent statistics, goal scoring wise, people. Um, for, for him to have such good goal scoring, um, statistics, it means that he has a clinical edge about him, but for me. I am very much wary of the passing stats because if you want to build a team, yes, we might think that the passing stats is not important. A lot of people will say the passing is not important because he's scoring goals. But let me tell these people, what about when you're not scoring? What else do you offer when we're not scoring? When the team is under pressure, when we're playing against a better team, what do you have to offer? But definitely, um, that is something that he can work, work on. He's 26. He's in the prime. Um, I think that's something that he has to work on. But the stats, is the goal scoring ratio, um, his average rate, um, goal scoring um, ratings as well, is immaculate. These are high standard, very, very high standard, and I respect that. I like that as well. Potentially, he could be maybe the leading goal scorer in the league. Um, we'll see. Um, he's a quick player based off his height and... Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna definitely gonna do some do some more research. I'm gonna watch maybe two or three of his games to see how well he performs, and let's see if these um these passing stats are maybe minuscule to what he does. But the thing I didn't um realize one of the things that I realized could make his passing stats low. We should factor in that he's a high touch striker, and high touch striker means that he will be coming deep to receive the ball a lot. He will be receiving the ball a lot, and that means that. You'll be passing more than any other of the other striker that were that were included, um, which means that if he missed five or so com complete five or so passes in 15 out of 15, his passes has to be below because he takes more passes. And if Ivan, if the other strikers take like 10 passes or eight passes and complete the same five, his pa their passes have to be significantly high. So these are some other things that we have to look at. So maybe the passing stats is just uh, either or take away to what is actually it. So I'm going to run through the, um, the comments right now, people. Um, um, Liverpool don't create enough chances. Whoa. Not, not this season. Not this season. Because last season, they were, they were solely depending on the fullbacks to create chances. Then I'm just smash like on people. I, have, I should at least have 30 likes on this video. At least. Minimum 30 likes. Um, it's sad for the players this time around because the Jamaican squad is not normal. It's going to be very difficult to play, see this one. It's going to be very, very difficult to select this squad. 
And EMW said, I don't rate Johnson Harris, Johnson Clark Harris, because he can't pass the ball to save his life. Um, as I said, um, Ian, the passing stats could be um, maybe uh, indefinite because of the amount of passes or touches he has per 90. So that could be one of the reasons why his passing stats are not the highest. So I, am, I, I won't kill him for that. And if someone should score that amount of goal, it means that they, they, they have good touch. They have a very, very good touch and can find himself in the right position. Omar Morgan said, um, once we have speed, kill any big side. Defenders are afraid of speed. Defenders are afraid of speed, people. Defenders are really afraid of speed. So people, um, I won't get any longer. It is getting late now. I don't think you guys want me to keep you up any longer. You guys probably have something things to do. But I thank you very much for taking the time out. You took one hour out of your day. One hour out of your day to come and um, show me some support and discuss football like we always do. Um, please smash the like button before you go, people. I would really, really appreciate everyone who came on. Um, thank you, Ian. Each time you come on the show, you give me a different player to look on. And I really do appreciate it. Um, keep that up. And I will definitely give you guys answers that you are seeking. Um, please, guys, if you haven't done it, go and check out my, my recent interviews um, with Mr. Um, Andy Williams. Um, I did that a few, maybe a week or two ago. Um, also, J.D. Dwight. So, definitely, this has been a fairly good show. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I'm hoping. I, I came here for you guys to give you guys some stats. Open your eyes to some of the players. Hopefully, you guys um, enjoyed it. Andy Williams said, um, oh, Andy McNally says it. Um, good show. Thank you, Andy. Um, much, I'm much respect, people. Please don't go without hitting the like button, people. A lot of respect. Um, military good TV people. Um, thank you very much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And I'm trying to give my give back my best as possible to show you guys what is happening. And this has been a good one. Military Guna TV people, and I am out.